Hello, welcome back um, to my video. Before I start, those of you who are going to criticise my glasses, leave my glasses alone. That label's there so I know that they're my glasses. So, what are we going to talk about today? A black man's risk. A black man's risk of what? Of cancer. Now, are you aware that um, a lot of black men are suffering from prostate cancer? In fact, it's one in four, yeah, one in four black men will suffer from this cancer. What do I mean by black? I mean Afro-Caribbean, Afro-American, even the African men. Yeah, I know, I've been there. Now, um, we've got to take this more seriously. I mean, according to European men, it's one in eight. So it's one in eight. Black men, it's one in four. Now, you don't need to be Einstein to work this out. You know you're more at risk of getting that than anybody else. And we don't know why. I think there's some sort of genetic link, possibly um, going way, way back, where for some reason we were not selected, but we just had that higher risk. We've got to get our heads out of our you-know-what, because we've got to deal with this problem. It's, it's, it's a risky problem. Now, wh why are black men at higher risk? I don't understand. Was it the slavery? Did that happen? I don't know. I can't answer that question. I'm not an academic, thank God. But I'll tell you one thing I do know. We've got to start doing something. Because if your brothers had prostate cancer, your father has had prostate cancer, it's still one in four chances of you getting prostate cancer. Now, what do you do about it? Well, it mainly affects men over 50. Yeah, you, 50 years old. You need to start being aware of the signs of prostate cancer. It affects us in such a way that we're, we're really quiet about it. You know, like almost like church mice. We don't see anything, but we suffer. It's really, really important. Now, the good thing is, is that um, they've got specialist nurses that actually go and look after these men. And um, they talk to you in, in, in a proper way. And I'd recommend, this is me saying it, I recommend you go to your GP. I know what you're thinking, waste of time. Sometimes, I've got to be honest, it really is, but not in this case, not in prostate cancer. Because it's, it, it's serious. You've got to do something yourself. We've got to do something. Now, I've had a boy, um, he's 14 years old, and um, he was at school, a um, physical boy, and um, he's mixed parentage. Now, listen to this mix. His mum's white, and his dad was Asian. So, of course, he started to get some problems. First of all, he told me it's a problem with his knee. I said, oh, well, you know, you, you know knees, you've got to be careful with knees because knees are such a, um, made in such a way that they do last for literally a lifetime. But, um, you know, if you're unfortunate, you get problems. Anyway, a little bit later, I've worked it out and I said, it's not your knee, is it? Anyway, he come clean because, you know, it, there's no way for me to know. He says, yes, sir, I've got prostate cancer. I said, look, look, son, it's not the end of life. Deal with it. Go to the doctor, go to the hospital, deal with it. Now it's taken about three years, and he's left school now, and he's gone to uni, and he, he wants to dance. I know what you're saying, he wants to dance, but I've got to tell you, he's wicked at dancing, and he's doing it now. So, you know, for a young boy, that's good, but, you know, at that age, to have prostate cancer, I would have been absolutely devastated, but he handled it well, and he handled it early. It's really important to do that. Now, with you guys, my age, right, you, you've got to start thinking in a different way. I went to my doctor and I said, look, in fact, you know what, I didn't go about prostate cancer. I went because I was feeling like, um, like, see you next Tuesday. That's how I felt. And if you know what, see you next Tuesday, you know exactly what I mean. Anyway, um, so he says, look, he says, look, I've done your checks, I've done the blood pressure. i got high blood pressure. So what? I'm, I'm Afro-Caribbean. That's what happens. 
you know we ate too much salt in a day that type of thing so it didn't bother me it's a risk I accept it and he says Look, you know I better tell you now that you know you might have prostate cancer I said you what prostate what I didn't even know what a prostate was I thought it was like in your neck clearly it's not in your neck so I said what are you talking about he says well I'll tell you what it's like it's like a little orange right like my fists are too big but it's small it's like a little orange and it's um in your testicles uh, and it sort of grows and the first real signs of it it stops you from pissing properly sorry to use that word but it does and I said to him well I ain't got no problems here I, I know my piss for it's, it's not about that he said anyway he says look I'll tell you what let's let's just have a check I said check what he said check what he says, yeah, all right. I, said, I didn't know what he meant I thought check I'm gonna have to open my mouth uh, anyway he didn't say that did he he said drop your trousers I thought drop my trousers I thought no 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 he said drop your trousers so I did he said get up on that couch I thought what's he talking about so I laid him he said no turn around on your knees I thought I haven't done this before what's going on here anyway before I could say Chris Jones he had his fingers up my bum and I've got to be honest there's a first time for everything nothing that I've experienced can explain what it was like the funny thing is this is between you and me having two fingers up your bum ain't that bad it was all right and that was it he took his fingers out obviously he had his gloves and he's not going to without gloves so he took his fingers out he said yeah that's okay and um you know I, I had that fear I thought I'm not going to deal with that but after having that it was so easy what are you scared of get down to the GP the best people to see get down get on that couch in fact forget the couch get on a bed bend your knees bend over bang he'll tell you you have that but you haven't I, I, I met another guy and um, it was last year no year before Mr Lydia um, absolutely fantastic man um, he really was he was fantastic in the sense that he he was in the West Indies he came to England and um, he gave back especially to his grandson he's giving back loads this is a lovely lovely character you couldn't have daughters he was a nice guy and he died of it and um, you know that was quite sad he was an older guy but he died of it but he, you know it, when someone dies you don't expect this type of thing and um, it's one of the things that stuck to me is that you know we as men we've got to talk about it sometimes you've got to get women to push you um, they really have to push us because sometimes we're so um, we're so backward in coming forward you know this is a real thing I mean I know statistics from cervical cancer um, which is not not good for women but you know what they deal with it they jolt on the couch Doctor does his bit, scrapes, scrapes, well not scrapes, 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 maybe it's the wrong word, but he does his stuff and, uh, and that's it, he goes from there, we've got to do something, let's start fighting and battling cancer, we've got to do it, we must start fighting it now, it's not easy, I'm telling you that now, it's not easy, but let's get in there, let's get in the doctor's surgeries, let's get tested, that's where it starts, if you don't get tested for prostate cancer, you're going to be in trouble remember one in four and i'll tell you something to the european guys you better get your ass there as well because you need to get tested because you're one in eight that was eight wasn't it yeah that's eight yeah one well in eight you've got to get tested you've got to do something about it because you know what men are dying men are you know it's now taken over as the number one killer of men and we're still quiet about it you know because, oh, he dies and we don't say anything but as we look at the um, the patient ethnicity is becoming really obvious why aren't we doing anything you know at this moment in time there's 330,000 men with prostate cancer now, we don't know how many of those are black men but we can guess it's quite a few we need to take we need to take 
action. We need to do something. We need to do something about prostate cancer. You know, you're worried about it. I know what you're saying, but you've got to get yourself to the doctor. Now, look, I'll tell you what. Just send me anything you got, and, you know, I'll talk about cancer again. Um, you know, but I'm going to go now because, of course, I'm waffling for too long. But please remember this. You Africans, yeah, you. African, African Caribbean, mixed race men, you better start sorting your stuff out because you're not sorting it out and you're dying, dying, dying. Young, that's no good. We need to do something, right? We need to do something together. And if you send me, send me anything, I'll get it off to the right people, okay? My email address is admin, A D M I N, at chrisjones.com. Do you want me to say that again? Admin at chrisjones.com. By the way, um, there's another woman that does a lovely bit of work for us. But that's on the people that are already dead. That's, that's, not, that's not good enough. We need to get started. We need to do something now. So let's get going. Send the emails in. I'll get them off to the right place. I will be talking about prostate cancer in the near future. Have a great day. Bye.